get a bond at a discount. And so on January 1st, 2019, NOR Corporation issued a million of 9% five-year bonds dated January 1st, 2019. The bonds pay interest annually on December 31st. The bonds were issued to yield 10%. Debt issuance costs associated with the bonds totaled 18,000. Prepare the journal entries to record the sale of the bonds at the effective rate of 10%, the first interest payment using the effective interest method, the amortization of the bond issue costs using the straight line method, and then our December um, 2020, so our second interest payment and that second amortization of the bond issue costs. And so I just set up um, these inputs so that we could create, this is not straight line, it's effective, so that we could create a um, amortization schedule. And I'm also just going to do the bond price again, even though, oh no, it didn't give us that. So we do need to calculate that. So the face value is 1 million. Got to get my commas here. I can't see anything. Okay. The stated rate is 9%. Market is 10 um, total number of payments will be five because it's just once per year for five years. So then we need to calculate the cash payment so that we can use that to calculate the bond price. And that's going to be equal to the um, face value times the stated rate times time. And in this case, it's just one. Um, for best practice, though, we should put open parentheses 1 divided by this number of payments so that if that were 2, you could reuse this formula and, and it would um, work out for you. So the cash payment is 90, and we can use that when we calculate the bond price. So the bond price will use the present value function, so we'll type equals PV open parentheses, and the rate is going to be the market. And um, again, for best practice, we're just going to say divided by the number of payments per year. And that, of course, in this situation is still going to be 10%, but that's so that we're setting it up so that if it was semi-annual, it'd be dividing it for you to give you that 5%. Um, the number of payment periods is five. The payment, we just calculated this cash payment of 90,000. And our future value is 1 million, close parentheses, and press enter. And we get um, 962.092.13. And if you don't like seeing that in the negative, you can put a negative sign in front of your PV, and it'll display it as a positive. So we now um, obviously can calculate the discount on this bond. And we'll go ahead and create a quick amortization schedule as well, and then we'll do those journal entries. So we'll always start out by putting the book value on the first row, and then um, we can go on creating our amortization schedule. So for the cash, we already calculated it here as 90,000, but we'll go ahead and do it again just for good measure. We'll say equals the face value, make that an absolute cell reference, times the stated interest, make that an absolute re cell reference, times, open parentheses, one divided by number of payments per year, make that an absolute cell reference, close parentheses, and enter. So we get that same 90,000. Now, um, for the actual interest expense, we are going to say, that it's equal to our previous book value, and we don't want to make that absolute because we want that formula to drag down, times the market rate, and that should be um, a cell reference, or absolute cell reference, times open parentheses 1 divided by payments per year, again, absolute cell reference, close parentheses and press enter, our premium then is that interest expense minus the cash payment. And then the bond value 
or book value of the bond is going to be our previous book value plus this premium. And now we should be able to drag this formula down. And I, mean, I guess we keep going until we get to that million dollars. I'll delete these. Uh, we don't need all of these for this problem, but now you've created a, an amortization schedule for a premium and save this amortization schedule and format because it's slightly different than doing a discount where you'd be subtracting the discount from the book value each time. So, okay, now let's get back to the what it really asked us to do. <laughs> Prepare the journal entry when we sold the bonds at the effective rate of 10%. I'm just gonna, um, I'll come down here. No, I, I'm gonna do it on the side, sorry. So we have one, one, 19 and on this day we received cash because we sold our bonds payable or our liability and we also have a discount on the bonds payable. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. All right, our bonds payable is the face value. And then our discount is our face value minus this selling price or, or the, yeah, the selling price is what we should call it. Um, and so then as far as cash goes, we received the difference, 962,92.13. And on this day, we also need to account for this debt issuance costs totaling 18,000. And so on the first, we're going to have our deferred debt issuance cost and cash for 18,000. And then it's telling us that we're going to um, amortize that straight line. So equally over the next five years, we'll, we'll be expensing that out. So now record the first payment using the effective interest method on 12, 31, 19. And so to record that, we're going to have our interest expense and then we have to credit our discount on the bonds payable and credit cash. And, oh, sorry, I just realized I pulled over the titles from my um, amortization schedule where we were doing a premium, but now we're doing a discount, which is a credit. Okay. And so luckily we already have it in the amortization schedule. So our interest expense is this 96. The discount is our 6209 and the cash is 90,000. And then the next part is also asking us to do the amortization of the bond issue costs. So that's also on the 31st. And now we're going to expense one-fifth of this because it's just equally over the five years. So we'll have interest expense and a credit to that deferred debt issuance cost. It's a little bit bigger again. Now it's going to be equal to 18,000 divided by the five years for 3,600. All right, so now, um, December 31st, 2020, the second interest payment using the effective interest method. So I'm gonna just copy the titles down. And this is 12, 31, 20. And again, we can just refer over to our amortization schedule. So the interest expense is 96,830. Our discount is six hundred or six thousand eight hundred and thirty, and the cash is still that same ninety. 
And then the December 20th, or sorry, December 31st, 2020 amortization of the bond issue is the exact same because it's straight line, so it's just going to be the same every single year. Except it, I didn't, I didn't do the absolute cell reference, so. All right, and I think that's it for this problem.